with the immunization that's one. So our team is just a few um, paid professional and one admin working on mainly three uh, three main streams that show Geneva and we like to have three levels in that. The first our first function is just to manage the governance, the global governance of the black chain. And this is working with um, Global partner of military guardian and uh, from international organizations that are key in the food chain, like the PAR, DSI, and the system. And this co governor coordination is just to coordinate the priority, how do we set the priorities, uh, how do we coordinate this assistance to the countries. And then we regularly you know, test to evaluate and make the global monitoring. To different indicators to see what are the main priority areas for interventions. And the second uh, stream of work is the um, development of uh, so technical product, uh, product is, uh, normative guidance, tools, just to help planning and implementing the strategy. And the third, uh, not the last, the least, is the provision of um, Specialized technical assistance. Let's say if a country wants now just uh, any support for assessing their supply chain performance, we can go ourselves and support the country or like that. Or conducting the overall protein assessment in the country for be it introducing new vaccine or uh, like COVID or Ebola. So we can just specialize just move that ourselves to do that. <laughs> So this was just an introduction, so after that, uh, um, you don't know who you are in face of you. So, uh, as I said, that this is just the logo of the IGB department within the play show. And the session uh, we are going to have today is just the cold chain. And cold chain is, there are so many things to say there that I will just try to summarize things. We may not be able, we may not be able to cover all the things. And the complement, I will completely rely on you with the questions that you can what I'm going to see to, 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 to the perspective I'm going to see to show you. Only your question will complete probably the element that will be missing. So I hope I'm, I'm, I have it right. And the technique need to help here. Maybe I think we need to stretch it. Point to specifically somebody. Uh, in here, page down. Uh, I'm afraid that I'm going to go Yeah, let me, let me pass. The slide is Okay. Ah, 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 okay. Cold chain or logistics is not just by its own evolving. It had to be in a certain context. And it had to respond to some of the purpose or the objective that are bigger. And in this big, big picture, we are now in the context of um, 
what we call legislation agenda 2030. And I think that if I'm right, tomorrow you will have a session on that. Yes. Yeah, Katie yes. is coming. Katie is our director. I think director. And with the Andrew Trump, who is um, the API coordinator. So the United States agenda actually has said, you all know that this is the vision, just to ensure that uh, to establish a world where everyone, anywhere, at any age, is fully benefited from vaccines for good health and well-being. And these are actually the, the impact is aiming just to, to, to achieve. And in this, supply chain will be playing a real role. As we know that to do that, you need to introduce a new vaccine just to expand the number of vaccines in the national immunization programs. And this stress actually the supply chain to get more vaccine in the supply chain, more challenges. Be it for storing and distributing, and also for tracking vaccine. And the immunization agenda itself just has set uh, this goal with one priority area, which is assuring that um, supply chain and logistics ensure that vaccine be available everywhere where needed in the adequate quantity. So this strategic priority is one of the core embedded already in the. Um, immunization agenda. So this is mean just to say that it is contributing one of the pillar strategic uh, area for supporting achieving these impact goals. Another uh, global initiative. This is probably for a subset of countries. Why immunization agenda is all countries? Uh, Gabi is focusing on mainly on a subset of countries, low and middle income countries, just to ensure that those vaccines also have access to some vaccines and provision adequate support. And in this, actually, there's um, a vision that Gabi has stated in this uh, 5.0 um, level that is going for 21-25, Already two years to go. Setting here that a strong that the vision that strong supply chain should be delivering uh, these life saving vaccines for everyone, for every person when needed, no matter where they are. So this is mainly just to see that there's uh, substantial challenge in place of the cold chain, more broadly supply chain just to ensure that those global initiatives are fully implemented. So this is just something that I'll just show here we are probably familiar with this. Uh, from onset, we all have to say that culture is defined as a system or a network that brings vaccine from um, the manufacturer down to the service point where the child and mother have to be vaccinated. And you, as you can see, that it's composed of cascade, maybe depending the number of cascades and the country, cascade storage point and transport legs between just to ensure that vaccine is being available here, family, in the right quantity and in the right conditions. So it's just actually a network of equipment, but not only, but people also that are managing this. Uh, networks. But at each level, you have people that will manage it. So, this, um, this is where this uh, session is just trying to have some objective. I'll try to organize in five, but we'll probably not touch this. Before establishing a cold chain system in the country, for any product, be it milk, cheese, or uh, Oh, so what is it? <laughs> <laughs> you have to know the product you have, you have to deliver, isn't it? So you have to know first the product. So this will be the first, the first section, knowing the vaccine. I think as 
uh, this course will be providing you all the chain probably the production of the vaccine, the advanced research. But if the vaccine are available now with certain characteristics, now the work of the coaching starts. And the first thing that you have to know what you are receiving, what you are taking in this chain. And the second would be knowing that characteristic, how do you organize this network to ensure that thing actually being available, a potent with minimal, minimal uh, waste. And then you establish, as you said, the, the, the network, what are the capacities you need at different uh, storage point? What capacity for transportation you need at different transportation legs to be able to move the things? And then how do you establish a monitoring for the temperature? And the whole system now, how do you be managing it? So these are the main components we'll be trying just to, to cover. NADAS for the time will not, not probably not going to touch this. No vaccines. So here just the objective I said I just to describe what are the operational characteristics, define the storage temperature, you have to know that. And then identify different tools or devices and what we use, what are type of thermometer we have, what type of thermometer monitoring system we need, and how do you apply these in your practice. So you may not see, actually, this is an extract from WHO website, the pre-qualified PPS list of the vaccine. WHO has all these data are pre-qualified, but if you take all these vaccines, these are more, this pyramid is showing the different characteristics the vaccine are available in. And each of these are really important. These are the basics that are linked to the development of the vaccine. In the formulation, vaccine is being liquid, fully liquid, or um, Leophilite to be reconstituted, or, or number, uh, what is the mode of administration? Is it oral or injection or subcutane or nasal? The number of doses required to fully to protect the target, the storage requirement in terms of temperature, light, or duration in terms of shelf life, and for which dose if there is preservatives in the vaccine that to ensure that if you open it, a individual value you can just reuse it, uh, those preservatives and uh, uh, protect the vaccine for contamination or just uh, contamination. So this is the basic that I link to the vaccine production itself. The product is available. And now to finalize, this is the marketing. I would say that it's sort of how the product is packed to be delivered to the client. Uh, it can be in vials, it can be in fixed terrain, it can be in single dose vial or multi dose vial. Uh, it can be in different packaging, the wrap vial, and then the vial are in small boxes, and small boxes are in cartons. And also the dimension of the capsule depending on manufacturer, this are the These elements will play how the vaccine will be administered and what will be volume of the vaccine and how many pieces you have to take in your cold chain for distribution. Of course, it's how much it costs. Because if you are comparing different vaccines, okay, some vaccine may be favorable here, here, but maybe this may be a limiting factor. So you have to have these elements in mind instead of uh, selecting minimals here, or minimizing uh, this factor while increasing this, it will depend on each national emission program. So, you need to know this. So, let me qualified. Actually, I think this, this has to be updated. Currently, to let you, you have in this list more than 160 vaccines in this day. You can go to the website. In this 165 vaccines are presented in uh, more than 260 different presentations. So the same vaccine can have uh, what refill, uh, 10 dose vial, single dose vial, or, or so on and so on. 
So you need to know what, what to select. And I will say here, and then there's a wide distribution for temperature and, and, and storage requirement in terms of temperature. Before, we had only these two temperature ranges, the traditional one, 2 to 8 or minus 20, polio. But now, with the Ebola and COVID, the Pfizer vaccine or you know, MNRA, some of the foundation, this temperature range has been added. You have to be aware to look at it. And more and more, there will be a lot of advocacy just to try to make the vaccine more stable. And so manufacturer has stopped putting vaccine that can be stored as a You don't need a plenty of cold chain as per se. So 25 degrees will be sufficient to store. Yes. <laughs> yeah, please. So I've always understood that 25 degrees is not particularly useful because many countries have higher ambient temperatures and there is not a controlled temperature chain at 25. So if you want it higher, you need to be at least 40 degrees or something. Is, is that true, or do you think 25 has a benefit? Okay, it's, it's a good question, and I, I, it's difficult to answer yes or no. It has some limited advantage. For example, I think uh, people may know it. If the vaccine can be stored here at 25 degrees Celsius, at least at a central level, central store, you have the AC room. Mm. If you have met the bulk of the vaccine is arriving, you can use that flexibility yeah. mm-hmm. to, to use this and then to free some spaces mm-hmm. if need be. Yes, this is advantage can be, but we know that in villages. So, 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 so then you would just move it back into the right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think we kind of answered the question. So I'm interested in which vaccines have a optimal temperature. 25 yeah. and is that is that really just saying it's still viable if it goes up to 25 but actually it's stored at 2 to 8 in the majority of situations yes one of the, the, the objections for um, many countries to justify because uh, this way temperature yes they have made this vaccine available because there were a lot of advocacy oh made vaccine more stable uh no, I can't say the name of the manufacturer. The manufacturer made, made that vaccine very stable, uh, Rota. Because Rota, was, Rota, Rota vaccine was occupying, it was very bulky. And they, they, they say that if we may made this very stable, it will free space in the cold chain. Mm-hmm. We are ignoring that it may be not be possible at all levels. But this has led to increased costs. And come to start saying, no, we are not going to buy it. We continue with those vaccines that are here. And they start playing it. So it's so a no, but it is a global picture. If this is too big here and then we'll compensate the advantage you are providing here, you see, it, it will not fly. And also, can't we say that, okay, we cannot just establish the additional parallel cold chain downstream. So it, all the vaccine will be anyway in the two to eight. That was a main problem, but doesn't mean that we stop here. So probably they would reduce that. So in addition to the yeah, zooming now for the different presentations, you start vaccine depending on the way the vaccine are uh, formulated, matter in the physical thing. There's more complexity associated with that. Imagine that the vaccine that is just fully liquid. You see just single vibe. If it is your line, you see what are all the complexities and issues that will be associated with this, this, this thing. This information that I share sometimes with manufacturer, if you can make it fully liquid, go with it. Because it avoid all these making that, okay, if you have this thing that it will create that, uh, you may use the wrong, wrong, wrong component. And now they start using that clipper instead of yeah sending the vaccine yeah like for malaria like the, sending measles vaccine here and then do them to go to different boxes. People start using BCG do them to for, for, for so there are many issues that are associated with the vaccine formulation. We're going to ask 
a frozen liquid versus a tutelio, what would have the preference? <laughs> It depends what is what is your challenge in your program. If in your program, the, if this Leo is really this, uh, this, no, this liquid is very free, uh, sensitive to heat, you better have Leophilae because that is more stable, mm. and then you you invest more in you know management side to try to clean the vaccine to mitigate those those um, uh, errors. But you cannot, it's very costly to build for the same vaccine at minus 20. That will require freezers everywhere. Freezers are costly up to three, two to three times than investment and also operate, uh, running costs of the So it is a trade off. Yeah. Were you saying that the diluent is now often kept with the vaccine so you don't with the lyophilized vaccine so you don't accidentally use the wrong diluent? Like, does that mean that both the diluent and the lyophilized vial need to be in the cold chain together? You know, the diluent yes. need to be both. Yes. Okay. This is, this is the side of it. Yeah. So, but it will avoid that you use the wrong, yeah. the wrong mm-hmm. diluent because the two vials are taped together for the Malaria vaccine, they keep the two back together. Mm-hmm. But for traditional vaccines, uh, for the time being, they are not yet attacked. They, they send you the vaccines, and sometimes you can you yourself you have to order the diluent. Mm-hmm. And Sorry. this, there are many people in that. Sorry to get very specific, but for like measles and rubella, mm-hmm. um, would the diluent be kept in the cold chain with it, or would it be kept separate? And for, for the, the diluent should have to be kept outside the cold chain okay. in at ambient at all level of the cold chain except the service delivery okay. where you, you have to have to try yeah. to have the same temperature. Um, so they're together until they get to the end of the road yeah. and then they can be separated. Yeah. You see, it's separate until it's the end of the road. Yeah, it's, oh, it's yeah, it comes separated right. till the service delivery. Right, and it's together. So you got to make sure. And it's happened that you receive the vaccine, but yeah. you don't have the lens. Yeah. Well, yeah, you receive the lens, you don't have the vaccine. Mm-hmm. And you try to just say, okay, I have brilliant. Mm-hmm. I, I have vaccine, I don't have brilliant. I will use brilliant or yellow fever. Mm-hmm. So this, uh, this is a uh, uh, common difference. So, so most labs have a specific diluent, or is it also often water for injection that you can use? It depends on the vaccine. Sometimes some vaccines are just using normal saline, saline water. In that case, yeah, it can be. Yeah, but you have to pay attention because it's different. Some may have adjuvants. Exactly. Yeah, adjuvants in the, yeah. In, in the billion. That was just a sigh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So these are these are some of the just just for you to know that uh, by planning one have to have this in mind. So if I'm selecting this, this because of more stable, I have to put in place make it, um, measure that to mitigate the the associated uh, issues. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> we, we, the Blacho has provided a so few, uh, I would say in the second work stream, which is the technical product, uh, uh, back to the calculator, just to have a quick assessment of, okay, uh, in terms of cold chain, what vaccine will be, can select and see the impact. And this is, uh, vaccine work calculator just uh, provided as an Excel uh, so with a back chart that shows you visually, if you select for the same vaccine, if I'm using for example, um, which vaccine can be available in different things. Okay, so for some reasons it's available in five to ten to which one I'm going to take? Ten five to to make a quick a quick analysis. This small tool is just providing you uh, some of the out. Um, that will help you to, to see. You see that this is, for example, this is when you are introducing new vaccines. Different options are analyzed. 
option zero. This is just the holy pair a child. If you add this and then this is the new vaccines. Let's go back. And it gives you also the impact on injection supplies. How many injection supplies you have to carry with the vaccines and also the waste. The waste, injection waste means that empty vials, used syringes, that will come with a select, the vaccine you are selecting in your program. So, you know, you can make, okay, hmm, fine, I'll probably take this, or I'll take this, depending on what I have, if there's no, so you have visual, visual element in this tool. If you plug this information, up, the five dose versus ten dose, it will give you those elements. Maybe ten dose will be, have less cold chain, but uh, less cold chain, and also less weight waste, uh, waste generated because one vial you have to use once, uh, one serine to dilute 10 doses. If we are taking five doses, you need for the 10 doses additional serine, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So uh, this will inflate how much serine will cost. So you have to make those analysis to see. This is the tool. This is the purpose of the tool. And this also, you can just remember this. It's just generic, yeah? We are just presenting here the stability, um, temperature sensitivity of the vaccines. Vaccines are sensitivity at heat, and also some vaccines are, sensi are sensitive to freezing. And in this chart, you show that, okay, the vaccine, the closer here, means that they are not really sensitive to freezing. Mm -hmm. If they are here on the right, Better they are more sensitive to freezing. So if you accidentally store them at minus temperature, um, there will be uh, damage. So you see that these were traditional vaccines actually, and the newer vaccines were coming. Heb, Heb, Penta are becoming more and more free sensitive. So this is something that we are just um, we notice in the this big list we have. So you have to know that where the vaccine stand. Any vaccine that is coming, where it stand? You see more vaccines are coming. All these vaccines we have put put this chart to see that. But actually, more and more vaccines are coming here, with the exception till the COVID and till the Ebola. So. <clears throat> Aside from OPV, it sort of seems like the liquid ones are, are well, I guess it's not true. There's a range up there, but yeah. they seem to be more free sensitive than the liquids, and the, it's largely what's dividing them, right? The, the liquids are free sensitive, and the lyophilized are not. Yeah, the lyophilized are not uh, free sensitive. Uh, free sensitive. Lyophil all the lyophilized are more or less here. You see, uh, rabies. Many yellow fever, BCG, all these are responses to the vaccines and they are lyophilized. So they are not free sensitive. There's no water in them, so there's nothing to fix. Yeah, exactly. So if you more, more and more vaccines can be such as rotavirus, IPV, you probably know this influenza vaccine, where they stand in this, in this uh, chart. Questions. The first question. Sorry, Michelle. Michael. Michael. Okay, can you just read this? Um, vaccines will remain potent as long they are kept in the cold chain. Is that true or false? Thank you. Uh, uh, second. So you know what to say. Once once vaccine potency is lost, it cannot be regained. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's irreversible. It yeah. cannot just. Yeah. True. Um. Rebecca. Answer. Yeah. 
All vaccines can be stored at two terms. So what was it? They can, but they won't be great. Like, yeah, I was going to say it. We didn't say how long. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So probably true. Because it depends on the end, end it's the really Exactly. Yeah. That we end it is not administered in uh, negative temperatures. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. no matter you go there at, uh, at minus um, 80, yeah, you, need to, you, need, yeah, you need to take them up to 2 to 8 before I say yes. Mm-hmm. But it just the, the, the length of that is just. Uh, yeah. And last one. So localized vaccines should never be stored at minus 15 to minus 25 degrees as they can be damaged by freezing. False. False. With a cash. There's nothing to free there. They're already free bank. <laughs> okay. So good. Next. Now. This is a key point just to remember here that uh, vaccine <clears throat> lose uh, potency in time. No matter the cold chain, even because the shelf life, mm-hmm. no matter you have your cold chain perfect, if the shelf life is over, it's over. Yeah. So you cannot regain the loss of potency. Mm-hmm. You can just test if to ensure to confirm that if it is really lost, the potency is not there. And the loss of potency is accelerated by exposure to light or temperature, depending on what. The higher the temperature, the quicker the vaccine will be uh, damaged. Mm-hmm. And say that most liquid vaccines are damaged, damaged by freezing. Yeah. For example, this will just be for you because you will have this, this slide here. Let's make it. An exercise with your, the people just feel that, okay, where at, you know, you have the supply chain, this is national level, district, service. We have put these three different temperature ranges, minus 20 plus two. Try to make this exercise with your, for the world, people are asking that they will be ticking where the first question is that they have to tick twice in cell where each vaccine or dilent should be stored at the level, if this height can be, uh, should be stored here, you have to put T, T. If it should be stored here, you have to put T, T. And then one tick, sorry, if the vaccine can be stored at temperature, one tick. Let's say BCG can be stored at here, isn't it? At minus 20. Yes. It is neutralized. Sometimes. As it can be stored also at uh, uh, plus five, but not ambient. Vaccine should not be stored at ambient and can be stored at ambient. So this is just an exercise just and discuss. So okay, it's very, very hard. People just argue and mm-hmm. we're not going to make that. <coughs> this is again additional story temperature from WHO reference document. How you see that the vaccine should be stored uh, two to eight, and there are some exceptions. And the exception we know that utilize vaccines, uh, OPV can be stored at a uh, temperature. Some vaccine never. Uh, um, some newer vaccine are labeled for storing at minus, like the the Pfizer vaccine or the Ebola. You see that at the higher level of the supply chain. And then this is just the natural hook from that not to recommend, just tracing this again, just uh, to store free free dry vaccine to be stored at minus minus twenty. We are saying that this was issue because you still see people that buying freezer just to store measles. There's no science test that is why that two to eight. And putting here that if the vaccine are bundled with the dilent, so the pack bundle should be stored at the date. 
so that the dealer should never be uh, frozen. Okay, so I think this is uh, the transport, uh, transport also. That's stressing some from the studies that one of the most common causes of exposing vaccine to freezing occurred during the transportation. You know, the vaccine are transported using cold boxes, vaccine carriers with ice packs that should be properly conditioned. Then that you will, will see this later on. If we, this process is not well done, so the, uh, the temperature becomes very low, subject temperature into cold box or in the like the uh, vaccines. So assuming they can be stored up to minus 25, that's okay. Yes. How about at minus 80? Mm. Uh, it has to be specified for minus 80. If you store for example measles at minus 80, uh, first of all you will not uh, have that equipment to store it. And it is not uh, recommended because there are some vaccines, I think uh, one vaccine uh, from, uh, from, from COVID, clearly we say that do not store a temperature below minus 40. So it's clearly that you should not store those vaccines, even your favorite vaccine at, at minus, minus, uh, minus 80. The primary packaging is also open at one point. So the stopper, the rubber the stopper becomes brittle yeah. at very high temperatures, and then you lose your container value your integrity and your utilization strategy. So it really needs to have a special packaging to be qualified for the You know, the, the minus, minus uh, 80 is like a fire, but in the opposite side. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and you can just remove the skin of your periods. Yeah, so the material of the vines or the thing may not withstand this. It's not, it's not tested for that Um Yeah, this is just a double chair recommended for practitioners. You see that in the manual books, some of the documents were shared. You know? So this was the traditional and with the explanation, uh, what is the storage temperature at the different level and the duration of the storage. These are liophilic vaccines, and then these are liquid vaccines. Some of them are listed here. Some exceptions that liophilized can be stored in both ways, can be stored. It's acceptable. If you don't have enough space here, so you can just use that flexibility just to store there. But not, not proportionally designed to buy freezers to store it. Okay? But these have been challenged with the New Year vaccines. You see that we start seeing that two additional temperature ranges have been added to the traditional one. The first was some of the vaccines that are um, CTC eligible, uh, like some manufacturers start producing, as we say, the um, uh, um, what Okay, many, 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 many A vaccines um, that can be stored at uh, uh, up to 40 degrees. Yeah. What is that for three days, though? Yeah, okay. for three days. Okay. So, of course, it's control. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah control. And, and then if they have a, a how's that, um, the tags? VDM? Yeah, not VDM. Okay. Uh, uh, um, Temperature control, temperature control. Uh, monitor. Yeah, monitor. Yeah, monitor. Fantastic. The VVM are uh, for on the normal vaccines. Normal here and here. For the time being, there were no VVM for these temperature ranges. No. And um, but yet to come, they, they will become because the development and the progress is going. So this traditional vaccine to that, we have this. So vaccine, we see that more and more. Rota, for example, is rota thermo, which can be stored here, at ambient, uh, plus 25. And this COVID vaccine, the uh, Pfizer vaccine and Ebola vaccine that we have. The, actually, the first generation, 
were available to be stored here, at least for the always at the end of the chain, supply chain will the vaccine. Are. I have a question. Are the, the CTC eligible ones, I see that they're at the service level for up to one month in the ambient temperature. Um, so does that mean are they often also like DVM 30 so they can be out at ambient temperature for up to 30 days? Yes. Or? Okay. yes. Um, if you have the, a vaccine that is DVM 30, but, uh, but don't throw the information away from the person. <laughs> no matter, the vaccine can be stored at 30. If as a manager, yes, you can start from here already, put here, because you say that this vaccine, I will use it in, in, in 30 days, in one month. This stock I can store here at Ambient because Vivian 30 means that it will withstand 30 days at 37 degrees Celsius, so which is a great advantage. But if you start consuming that here, you may fail to have this at 70 degrees. It's an example of one that's 30 days. 30 days have B. If I take B, TT, these vaccines are mostly with Vivian 30. So if you know that, you say, okay, I have, I receive, I receive a partial vaccine. I don't have enough space. Even at the national level, you can just store here. But you have to, to, to mark in your stock. I uh, put there not just to, to consume that capacity before they reach here. So. Yeah. So and maybe just for the thing, the lecture has issue, um, that it was telling just to communicate that information. The programmatic aspect or the operational characteristics of the vaccine with the manufacturers, WHO has sometimes issued this, um, what they call the programmatic suitability of vaccine candidate for the qualification. So because manufacturers were complaining that, but we don't know what we need in advance. Just only the vaccine and then at the end we say, oh, this is too bulky or the temperature is not uh, so. So this document does spell out. More or less the preferences, they are critical, preferable, and, and, uh, again, we'll have it here if, I think, the, I didn't put the reference in the document. So it really provides, uh, the most suitable characteristics of the vaccine that, prefer. if you can, my father, if you can, we will try, try to meet that. If not, okay, fine, because we know that, uh, it's not possible. Yeah. It was really a useful document, and it's a help actually to to streamline and accelerate the introduction of some of the vaccine, like um, rotavirus vaccines. Tell me why the the first rotavirus vaccine that were made available were in, in a syringe. Syringe. It was the first time that in developing countries people see syringe that is oral. If it's syringe, it must be an injection. Um, exactly. <laughs> it was a prefix syringe. Okay. If it is syringe, it must be an injection, an injection. The state of the training people are <laughs> the training of people just and this makes some problems. So and also this syringe was very, really bad. They made the US, the US standard for packaging. You know the US you are from, from US, huh? Mm-hmm. You know, they pack the packaging. <laughs> <laughs> unnecessary. So, unnecessary. So, to make fancy to me. No, just minimize. <laughs> yeah, this will help us help us to, to, to reduce those volumes because they are big bulky for, for most of the countries, especially Gabi, Gabi supported countries. Okay. When we know the characteristics, the temperature, what we need to have in mind by selecting any uh, vaccine with little characteristics, we know what should be the consequences in the program just to be clear. That's the thing. That means that we should not select this vaccine, but we know in advance what will be the impact. The second section just the organizing the pull chain, just defining here deployment option. How do I do? Key possession for student park. What, how are the parking is happening for transportation and describe the different distribution modes. 
The CPI can are very, really different. If you look here for, this is most likely for a country like Switzerland, you know, uh, developed, developed countries, they have big pharmacy or wholesalers. Uh, uh, that country like the Geneva or like teaching hospital medicine innovation, uh, uh, warehouses where you have provisions directly. The spectrum is very short from big pharmacy directly. Only one with the patient. In Benin, <laughs> It's very long, it's very centralized system. Okay. So they have put so that in the, yeah. they have put that in the public health, you know, a vaccine supplier, either through partner in UNICEF, a country or supplier, they buy vaccine from, from, from manufacturer. Vaccine is still here, that's the level. And then they distribute down. Each province gets a location. And then each district gets its allocation. And then health centers also, health posts, and then declared. So it is very long supply chain. Maybe this is the only the only way because here the clients are very close to the services. But if you don't put such a system, most of the places it will be stuck in the maybe subnational store, where the region where the people have with the infrastructure. But to go in the far west, far most villages. You need to have a structure system like that just to reach those last mile thing. It's not that, that it is there, but it is a necessity for those countries. And more and more with the, the COVID and the Ebola, when Ebola uh, appeared in Guinea, we have been asked to go and establish a cold chain to, to support the, the clinical trials. We come with our already the stereotype. Cold chain is, we forget this. Cold chain is that cascade. Instead of, okay, let's build in Conakry, a big a warehouse with the vaccine at minus 80. Each province will have its own warehouse with minus 80. Each district will have, and be uh, millions of safe. No, it is not possible. So it is not the only way you can do it. You can put this cascading, but you can also put a rapid deployment. Just one central where you have the minus 80, one point of investing, and now transporting vaccine rapidly to store where for the teams just to vaccinate, and then that's it. You bypass this, you bypass this, you go straight away. So don't think that the cold chain is not only this, but rapid deployment more and more um, has equal value or even more efficient than cascade down thing because of here you have a lot of investment, you have it's required a lot of resources, you need to have skilled guys just just managing here, skilled guys here, you have software to manage the stock, software to manage but here one central point where you are sure that you have at least on one where you could just be managing this. So more and more I think for those interventions is is easy and cheaper just to have in the system. So these are different more, more how do you distribute the vaccine? Do your client collect or do you deliver to them? And there are different advantages and constraints. I'm not going to read. You can complement. If you are delivering, what type of transportation do you need? Do you buy your own truck? Driver. <laughs> and then start doing it? Or do you just say, okay, you know that from Paraku to Kotono, every day people are going. That's what I'm going. Maybe I can just tell you, okay, I signed a contract with this uh, transport. Every time I wonder, okay, if you're going to take the box and deliver. Or outsource. A dedicated, not just randomly here, just using public and public, delivering public services. Or you have 
contact with service provider just to carry your vaccine when where you want and when you need them. But in any case, you need to manage that. So contracting doesn't mean that, oh, no, it's done and finished. You have to monitor. You have to have good development systems. Questions? Where were we the last time? Right here. Okay. <laughs> there is. Okay, question one. It is necessary to use raising cadence for transporting patients to vaccines. Fact with conditioned for same water. Yeah, it's very complicated. <laughs> so, I know that before producing a thing. So, sorry. It's not, so, if you want to to transport free sensitive vaccine using conditions frozen egg pack, you have the uh, ice box and you frozen a little bit to make sure that there are no more ice. Mm. Do you need to use again freeze indicator to feel that, or maybe they are exposed to? No. <laughs> are you sure that uh, this conditioning is appropriate? Not uh, sure. Exactly. Okay. No. It is. I think I screwed up here. I think that's right. Three indicators. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> so, yes. So, if you are using a condition, condition ice packs for transporting freeze sensitive vaccines, you have to use freeze indicator because you are not certain on the quality of the conditioning. People are just, oh, they saw people, they are too, too, too busy. They just take the frozen and then that, that way. So you use that just to check. Good. Second, maybe I'll be reading because this is okay. <laughs> frozen water packs. Frozen water packs. Mean that water packs that are frozen can be used to pack free sensitive vaccine for transportation if they are properly packed. If we are using the freezing indicator. Mm -hmm. If you are using freezing indicator, ah, it doesn't matter. You can use Ice, ice, ice cubes to pack three sensitive vaccines. No, no. Okay, people say, some can say that, ah, I'm using free indicator already. So I can, I don't need to care about the condition. Uh, you still need this early <laughs> Yeah, you see, the free indicator does not protect you, just warn you, ah, there were yeah. explosions. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just yeah. So I turned that way just to, uh, <laughs> to screw this. You see? So if you are using frozen packs, you cannot even use frozen pack with this precise vaccine. So your frozen water pack, are you making the distinction between conditioned frozen water packs versus yeah. frozen? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, no, the okay. I, I realized that you begin to Make it as an introduction before showing the things. So, what is the difference between conditioned frozen water packs and frozen conditioned frozen water packs? Yes, water you freeze packs of water till they are frozen, okay. and the conditioner consists of taking them and they they, they start towing inside. Oh, okay. The ice inside start towing. You will see that there are some measures that you see that the water are on the the body. Okay. And you can hear also. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So it'll never freeze your vaccine. Yeah. So there's not a risk. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think I've talked too much. What is the time? Are we only track? Time. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. It is necessary to use freeze indicator for transporting free sensitive vaccine pack with cool water packs. But no, because there is no risk of freezing. The water is not the water is just water that's taken from from the refrigerator. You pack with free sensitive vaccine. There's no absolutely no risk to monitor. Okay. 
So yeah. that's the only difference between one and three is the cool water packs, right? Yes, exactly. It's the cool water pack. <laughs> of course, if you're in Norway, you should not be saying, you look warm. Uh, I don't have warm here because it's so rare. Uh, we are talking to, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, for most free sensitive vaccines, shake tests can be easily established whether vaccines were frozen or not. Can you explain to me the shake test? The shake test consists of um, the vaccine that is, you need to make the shake test, is the vaccine that is free sensitive first. This is actually not three sensitive, irrelevant. So, to ascertain if a three sensitive vaccine has been frozen, you suspect because you are not there. But if it isn't, for sure, you see that it is frozen, you don't need to yeah. make a shake test. Okay. It has to, yeah, to lift the suspicion. You conduct a shake test. Let's say, okay, you have um, incidentally, your vaccine were put in the freezer for one day, and then your 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 employee, and then come, no, 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 it's only there. But you take it, you don't see it, he removed, you don't see that the, it was frozen on the solid. But maybe it was frozen, you don't know. Then you make it you apply, you conduct the shake test. And the shake test, you have to use the same batch if it is, uh, let's say, Hepatitis B or TT vaccine. This is your suspect. But you take a control, the control TT vial of the same batch. It can be taken from the same suspect batches. If you have 10, 10 vials that were suspecting, take one and freeze it. Mm -hmm. But this you know. This is definitely I froze this. Mm -hmm. And then you take the room and then you shake. Then you observe the speed of sedimentation. Mm. If the speed of sedimentation is quicker, this is your control in the sample one than the, the control, being that it has been frozen mm. or equal. So this only is valid for aluminum magic on the vaccine, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the shake test. It is a protocol that we have been developed. I think we can put the people here. So uh, just to ascertain that a suspected free sensitive vaccine has been exposed to subject temperature. Mm -hmm. You conduct that protocol. Uh, sometimes people say that, uh, how to conduct a shake test? They say, take a vial and then uh, shake, no. You have to freeze one yourself. Yeah. Or, or somebody just can know that this has been frozen a certain. Mm -hmm. That's your control. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. then the segmentation, the, because if you shake it, shake, shake, it will start sedimenting. Mm -hmm. The frozen vine will be sedimenting very fast. Yeah. And what can say that? Can we easily establish whether yeah. <laughs> and the last shake test is conducted to know if a frozen pre sensitive vaccine has been damaged by freezing. Doesn't it just tell you it's been frozen? It's frozen. It's frozen. So it is already frozen. So you don't contact a shake test for a already frozen because it's there's no there's no solution to be hit here. <laughs> no, it's it just intricate, you know. I want it just to play with well. <laughs> 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 Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> these are the two things that we have here. So and then these are just knowledge of coolant pack. How to use coolant pack is any um, coolant pack is here. Do you need, do you need to explain coolant pack? If you are going to picnic, 
you take you take your box or your basket, you wrap and then you put ice inside. The ice is your cooling. Okay. Mm -hmm. Means that this is providing the passive cooling. Anything that is providing passive cooling, you have pre cool or pre, pre freeze mm -hmm. earlier to take to keep your things cool. Mm -hmm. This is cooling pack. But ice ice block will melt and then we make on the facing so you don't do that like that. So how do you use a coolant pack? And this can be water, can be dry ice, can be any PCM pack. There are new materials that are now available if you want to go to minus 18. Can you use water pack to freeze to minus 80? No. We have tried. It's impossible. <laughs> it is impossible to figure. As soon as you put it, the temperature goes to minus 20. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in 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 matter of two minutes. Mm -hmm. So it is not it is not useful. So if the water water, yes, if the temperature is around zero, yes, you can use water. If the temperature dry as can be used if you are around minus 20, minus 80. Or you have the artificial uh, laboratory made combinations to have that. But how do you make a water to freeze not at zero but at minus five? Exactly. Exactly. You see, it is this all these are PCM material. You, you fabricate or you do yourself your own PCM materials. So, how do you use coolant pack combined with insulator? The, the choice is how do you select? You decide to use this, or you decide to use water, or you decide to use this, or different coolant packs. You know, this is just a carton, cold box, passing carrier, da, 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 da. So, there are just a few considerations of temperature and duration of conservation. These two, these two. These two considerations. To choose insulated container, you have to share that you are used to pack the axis for transportation, right? Can be your basket, but the bas this basket is closed. You can close, you have the lead to avoid that um, your coal is just evaporating. And then it has what we call the insulation, the good insulation. You know, sometimes in your basket, you put uh, additional growth, you know, um, just to, to, to keep the cold. And this insulation confer the whole over time at ambient, at given ambient. All over time means that if inside is zero degrees, knowing this insulation, it will take X hours before the temperature reaches 10 degrees. Inside temperature. This is the whole of the time. And then you call the solar capacity. For the, in the PQS, you will have all the insulated container or cold boxes in the common name are listed with those references. Uh, this um, blue king has all of the time of uh, 20 hours, 78 hours, and so on, so on, so on. But how to you choose the coolant pack? As I said, that it's used to keep the temperature inside the insulated container. Like your ice block you are putting in the basket. And the temperature of chain material. You know that if the ice start pouring or if you are boiling the water, if the water has 100 degrees, you can put whatever fire you want. Would the temperature increase? No. This is called the uh, phase change uh, uh, temperature. If the temperature will remain 100 degrees Celsius until you have a, a drop of water in your pot. So this is the system that we use here that if the temperature is um, Around zero degrees Celsius, which is two to eight, which is we use water. If the temperature, my vaccine has to be at minus eighty, 
I cannot see water. Because this temperature is very far from my phase change temperature of the water, which is zero degrees Celsius. Now in the industry, they start developing, this was natural, natural, these are natural um, materials you can find. Uh, this is a CO2. And this is a industry made, uh, made material. Now they are making some material that freeze at plus four. Four degree, four plus four degrees is frozen. You see, that would be ideal to transport vaccine at two to eight. So this is that the thing that we need to have in mind. There are different type of thing. Eyes. But don't worry, just so that the technicals. And these are different type of pull and pack in the Dublato classification. You have frozen water packs. You have conditioned frozen water packs that are derived from this. You condition them. You have cool water packs that are made from uh, cool and packs that have been kept in the refrigerator. And you have warm pack that are taken from <clears throat> from the city water in Europe, not in Chad. See, more or less, around 25, between 10 and 25 degrees Celsius. The definition, the utilization, where you use it, and then you call, what you call, warm life of the insulators. A new type of um, container that have been now to try to put this is um, the standard vaccine carrier that is in the place of PQS. and these are new type of um, that, that are isolated from the inside yes sorry just on the previous slide what's BVMs ah. being silly okay the vaccine with VVM can be transported without coolant pack. The VVM is a vaccine value monitor. We say that it indicates how long the vaccine can stay um, at a 27, 37 temperature, how long it can take before reaching the discard point of the vaccine. If you have BVM2 on polio, mean that if you put this polio vaccine at temperature continuously 37 degrees, it will last 22 days before you become unusable. The BVM30, if the vaccine have BVM3030, mean that this vaccine actually you can keep it 30 days continuously at 37 grad uh, temperature without being damaged, still, still put that. So if you have VVM, this, if you have, have to go quick, you don't need to cool, make the plasma. And there's a color metric indicator. Exactly. It's reached. Yeah. It is a color, a color change that we just, we're just showing you. If the vaccine, are, if the VM has reached the discard point, I think we have something. In. Yeah. Presumably, it adds the cost of the vaccine to include it. The cost, the cost, yeah. So uh, the cost will just make you to start hesitating in how can increase this uh, amount of vaccine. Yeah. If you can reduce your waste like the vaccine, I think it's very effective to become cost effective. Yeah. There are no batches, it's not very expensive. Yeah. But I think in the country, I haven't seen vaccine with VVM. We don't. That's why. Why? Why don't we have VVMs? Yeah. Um, I think because of our, we have our cold chain, our fridges and our freezers are alarms, so they've got other 
technology built into it, I think, that mm. helps to be like an insurance policy. So ah, yes. Now clear. Yeah. You have insurance policy there is something that can insurance program for that. Oh, I didn't mean insurance policy that way. I meant that we've got all these other we use other technology to maintain the temperature so there's less I think there's less scenarios where yeah. we're not certain if it's mm-hmm. beyond its shelf life or yeah. it's it's there's been um so we have alarms built into our fridges that go mm-hmm. off if they I think yeah. I have some 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 site here that I was with um Diana Alexander Diana he is working at uh, Nishatel. He's a practitioner in Switzerland. He was telling me that the situation in Switzerland is very difficult also. And recently, um, HUG, HUG is a hospital cantonal de Genève, which is organizing the supplies of the vaccine that is storage for different uh, uh, clinicians and practitioners. They were obliged to issue innovative guidance. Because they are in Switzerland, many practitioners were compared with that. The lady who came, or people who came to clean the, the clinic, sometimes uh, pull the fridge and then forget to plug it. Oh, and then they, were, they were throwing it way up to the phone. Yeah, yeah. Or oh, chat the phone. No, 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 once we don't have it, it's a degree called cheating. Exactly. But cutting is not cutting is something tricky. If you think that you are confident mm-hmm. without evident, yeah. the evidence, you may be wrong. And now they have issues something I think, but this also is not correct. Because I will, I will probably share send to you the site, as you see site, where it is in French actually, where they say, okay, uh, polio risk, they have different vaccines, polio vaccines. Uh, if you find that it can stand up to seven days and then you can put it back in the fridge. At Ambien, if it is kept in Ambien, Ambien in the Sudan is 24 degrees Celsius. They say you can put it back in the fridge. But I say, do you know maybe there were some sort of problems yeah. that were accumulating you? So if you take this only point, you may be wrong, it's still wrong. Because the vaccine is done by accumulating heat. Mm. So this, if you take that, you say, ah, you're only three days finished. But you don't know what has happened higher. Yeah. 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 So you see, even in developed country, yeah. things have so, some yeah. problems. So, okay. And you should know the whole history of that exact exactly. model. And exactly. that's exactly what Vivian does. Right? Exactly. Vivian does uh, give you that information, the history. Mm-hmm. But they're, they're, they're coming out or... or... There already is one that also can measure if you hit a certain like peak temperature as well, right? Okay. Because there's yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think it's, it's Vivian are really useful. Thank you for pulling me back. I was skipping Vivian even for all country for all the product because they are using it for. I was in uh, Washington three years ago. There were one person, an expert in cold chain, in the, not in the in the food chain. There are many food chains now, they are flying with billions. Yeah, in the food. Yeah. Good. You got to have like fish. I don't know. It's a beautiful life. So awesome. It's this fish. How fresh is this fish? Exactly. So I think, I think, billions are the investment of, it, it is, you avoid many things. Okay. Yeah? Uh, thank you for bringing my Sorry, and that was no, really useful. Can I ask one more question since you mentioned yeah. going out and going back in? Um, so if something is labeled for CTC, so it's mm-hmm. meant that it can go out for up to three days at 40 C. So say you go out on a campaign and you've taken it out of the coaching because you've got your CTC, but then you have some leftover product. 
You have to throw that away. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> this is the problem of CTC. Yeah. So you cannot just bring it back. Yeah. No, no. But in fact, because the text was not made there to ensure that you can bring it back. So is it almost better? Mm-hmm. If it were BVM 30, you could take it out, you would see some accumulated heat, but if it's still looking... Ah, oh, okay. Uh, it, 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 <laughs> you can take me face next to the mouth. Absolutely. If you have BVM 30, you don't need... No, I cannot say that because <laughs> yeah, we could let you work for the city. I cannot talk about it. So I'm going to ask, why is CTC 40 and PBM 37? Because it gets so more in development. We have to do everything though. And I'm like, 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 I'm <laughs> okay, I think that's that's good interaction. So I'm going to see. I do start analyzing that. Why am I using this? If I can have, if I can have, if I can look at any time, if I, if I can be taken back from it. Yes. So it's going to cost you dollars. Okay, this will just I will just here that uh, there are different type of uh, new new type of um uh, um vaccine carrier. Vaccine carrier. Here, then you put vaccine directly here. And these, you have, uh, um, yeah, the barrier between the, the, uh, the coolant pack and the vaccine. And actually here, the intention is just here, this barrier, thanks to the protective effect, you can use frozen packs. Okay. This will just few, few, uh, we, I think we should, we should dysfunction just for, to guide on different uh, COVID vaccines, what coolant you can use for transporting. It's just for your information. Yeah, these are the uh, temperature monitoring in the cold chain. You know that cold chain, you have the fridge and you have the device that is monitoring the temperature. And this device can be separated from the fridge to breathe. So this culture is they are they are actually uh, freeze indicators. They are not necessarily dissociated with the fridge, but it, it just monitor the freezing events. At the beginning they are like that, and if the ambient is exposed to temperature. Minus 0.5 degrees Celsius for 60 minutes, one hour. It can be crest. Alarm. It's very alarm. If you see an alarm, then you have to conduct a check test for free some free vaccines. And these are just the BGNs. These are the different stage of at least the pattern of it started like that. That this square is really lighter than the circle, and it start changing the color depending on the temperature exposure till the point where it's confused, the temperature is the same, which is the discard point. Mm-hmm. And any stage later on is not usable. This is the protocol for the check test. Mm-hmm. But check test it can be easily established whether this vaccine, not on any vaccine, but free sample vaccine, free, free dry vaccines, there's no point of making talking about check tests. These are liquid vaccines. And only, not only, not all liquid vaccines, only liquid vaccines that contain aluminum. So as I explained that, if you suspect from the indicate, from the indicator, it's whatever it is, you, you prepare your control vial. And then you take, you take one of the sample vial that is the suspected batch and you shake. And then you compare and you take the decision. The decision is like that. If the sedimentation is faster, sedimenting faster than your control vial, or the same, because the control is also 
frozen, then mean that you have been frozen. If it is the same or faster. If not, it can be used. Are there non alum adjuvanted vaccines that are freeze sensitive? And then if so, how do you test those? Yes, I think because there are some vaccines actually that are freeze sensitive, but the manufacturer don't provide how to conduct the test. Hmm. So if you have the frozen freezing suspicion, the only thing you have to discard. Hmm. Because there are some even heavy vaccines that some of the heavy vaccines are very difficult and not eligible to free to check the test. Yeah. This is the protocol for conditioning. I think this yes, uh, should be frozen in the freezer. You remove, put it in a table. Keep controlling, checking until you hear water inside. Then it's conditioned. Then you can use now to pack the bus. And this is just how you pack in the cold box. Normally, if you don't know, always read um, inside the cold box. There's always the, this picture that is showing how to how to proceed. Sometimes people don't pay attention. Then, yeah. Yeah, this is just reverse cold chain. Now, uh, under reverse cold chain, is that the definition that is given is the cold chain that is bringing. Um, Specimen, sample specimen from the bottom up to the laboratory. And these are some of the um, warnings that I put here that you should have an SOP. This to be integrated in the coaching plan also. Because uh, in, the, yeah, in the program, you have also many uh, diseases that are prone to surveillance, and surveillance requires some time. Um, this reverse call chain to bring spacement from from the field to the laboratory. Normally, it should be only kept. Don't use the same the same containers because they may have some contamination. Exercise. So you see the organization passport um, chain or cascade as much as possible for emergency intervention or most of the things you can do just the fast deployment, minimizing the storage point. Because each storage point is additional. At least never. Amazing. You know how do you use coolant packs? Cold pack, different type of frozen, condition frozen, cool packs, work packs. This is the third section now. What capacity do I need? It's just Gross, gross net capacity. What is the gross capacity of this room? Can we use all this space to store the vaccine? Probably not. Because you have to get inside. If <laughs> 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 you pack, you dump this, you cannot just get inside. So the gross capacity is always um, bigger, much bigger than the net capacity. Mm -hmm. And then you have to discuss then this different packaging. At the big warehouse, you don't store vaccine in small boxes. You store in the container or in the pallet. So this makes a difference because the volume per dose in pallet is different to the volume per dose in small boxes. So you, you have to have this in mind. And then based on that, you can calculate the pack volume and then know the different method of estimating the what volume do I need. 
Okay? So this is a demo trick here. So, <laughs> so we can continue. Okay. The natural storage of volume of CC is... CC quality and, uh, quality and equipment. Yeah. Okay. Is greater than the, the gross storage capacity. Yes. No. 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 So the, the net the, the net capacity cannot be bigger than the cross. Mm. Um, okay. Yes, cold storage capacity cannot be estimated unless the total quantity that is to be stored is known. If I don't know the total number of doses, I cannot estimate the project. Mm. Why? Okay. 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 If I know, for example, that my program is using PCG, uh, uh, FB, measles, I know uh, this is one dose in the shuttle, mm -hmm. uh, this is 10 dose, I know the packed volume of this mm -hmm. multiplied by that, I know the volume per child. I don't need to know a million doses. So yeah. this volume per child, I can multiply by the number of children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can know also, if I have one million dollars of PCE, yes, I can capture also the volume. You see? So, both method, you don't need necessarily to know exactly uh, the total quantity of the vaccine to be stored there. I can use the number of kids to be vaccinated. Thank you. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's just a trick. Uh, the available uh, capacity is not sufficient to store the planned shipment. The only solution is to provide additional storage capacity. Isn't it? <laughs> Probably not, but I feel like yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 is that the only way? Well, you can figure yeah. out. Yeah. 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 You can yeah. figure out. You can 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 And I could hope the quantity of vaccine you should be seen. Exactly, you can split. Is it? You well, can split the shipment. Split one yeah. and where? Okay. You can you can deliver in two shipments. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're still okay. Okay. So okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 I had to receive it. Oh, <laughs> oh, I need a free to store. Like, no, I yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. All solar refrigerators require batteries to continue operating during the night when there is no sun. Um, you, you are not obliged to do it. Yeah, you expect that it is not true. Yeah. Mask. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just I know. Okay, what? you know that this one. Yeah. yeah. They are now back at what we call solar direct drive. SGD. Mm -hmm. Where does it when there is a sun, you know the battery, what the battery is doing? The battery store the excess energy that is produced by the sun panels, and then it use that sun to operate during the night. But off of the battery? Yeah, this is the role of the battery. Hmm. So if you have your battery, solar battery here, and the fridge, the solar, battery, solar battery and the fridge, and the panels, the panels, the electricity goes to the battery. The panels, when there is the sun, the battery sends the quantity to operate the fridge, the excess is stored at. During the night, you use the excess to operate. What if you have no sun for a prolonged period of time? Can you measure how much battery life is left? Yes. You can design the battery to cover three, three days without sun. Mm. Depend. But if you remove that, 
how the fridge, you can store that electricity in the fridge. Mm. How? By producing more ice and then putting producing ice. Isn't it? If you have electricity is coming and they have to keep the refrigerator compartment and inside the body of the field you put their water the excess electricity that is coming freeze this water so during the night this water protect even if there is no sun to the stability of the field will be okay because the battery is very sensible, thin, very, um, very much or very often, it is prone to misuse. Isn't it uh, okay? Yes. And use it to part time. Like, yeah. like, you, <laughs> you see, that's why they make that nice English there. That the new, the new technology is just SDG, solar direct drive. And you have solar, solar battery drive. It simplifies the maintenance, yeah, yeah. maintenance also. The battery, we have to change the battery and the water. We are not going to have the spare parts. So, you, so basically, technology has been used to bypass the need for the battery. Exactly. 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 Cool. This is the new, the new fridges now. Okay, excellent. So we can see those equipment now. Okay, the equipment. Um, one of the functions is that, okay, what, how do you select the coaching equipment? You have to take into account the storage capacity. And depending, if we are the service delivery, you have to know, um, what available, uh, what, no, what coaching capacity, what coaching equipment are available. You cannot just try to buy equipment that are not yet available. And you have to take into account the capacity I need. The energy consumption and the total life. Um, cost. So don't just jump and buy the free because of ah this is cheap. There may be some hidden costs that will just blow up your budget, your running cost. It's the case of solar. Solar is much expensive than kerosene. Much expensive than kerosene, but kerosene consume. We are consuming, because there is no more kerosene in the electro big space. They are consuming one liter per day, continuously. Okay? And these are, all these devices are subject to estimation. You can estimate the storage capacity here, the cold rooms capacity size I need, the freezer or the normal freezer, freezer, freezer or refrigerator I need. Uh, for storing vaccine or for producing plant parts, all these things. What's the average lifespan of cold chain technology? Okay. A cold room, normally you design a cold room for 30 to 40 years. Okay. Operating. Okay, you can change the door, the, the seal of the door, but they fracture the walls themselves. Unless there's an accident, nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. You can change maybe the compressor, but minimum 40 years, 30 years, you are done. A refrigerator, normal, I don't know, quickly, let me can give you our experience. Mm -hmm. How, what is the plan, you know, the technical, technical life expert, expert of your refrigerator? New equipment, 15 years. Oh. A fridge is difficult to break, eh? because we uh, still have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. Maybe we are going to. It's an old fridge. <laughs> we, we all have our uh, yeah, grand grandma. Yeah, we are all in danger. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. 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 15 months. Yeah, yeah. 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 A little like sensor broke and some of the guys out, it was freezing. <laughs> so, that's <laughs> true. Fridge is uh, very. Very reliable technology, mm -hmm. especially compression. There is no breaks in the second system. It's kind of okay. What can happen is that sometimes by cleaning the yeah. fridge, because if you get frozen, people yeah. are to remove the ice, they start using the knife and yeah. that's you it. Can, you can cause the damage. Otherwise, if the fridge is there, 
I have my friend in Geneva since I have read 20 years. <laughs> 20 years now. It's a culture <laughs> so, and the solar panel are even more. Okay. Minimum 25. Yeah. Okay. 25 years. Okay. But battery, as we said, that's why it was really a day, the weak link in the solar solar refrigerators. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you calculate the, uh, I think we have an hour. Okay. Do you take no, 50? We got a coffee from the show. Oh, no, no, the time is at 3.40. 3, 40. 40. Uh, a 40? 3.40, yeah. We don't take coffee, no? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're the best for that. Yeah, yeah. Let's take, let's take uh, a coffee. A coffee break then. Coffee break, yeah. We can bring that just back up here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's take a break. Yeah. Yes. 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 And both um, okay. are both when we are using as is night to Yes, because I, I mean I need an aside from a clinical price and I needed the bar the, the, Yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Okay. 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 Okay.
For this verse? Yeah. Oh, no. Two so, songs. Yes. One two different constitute it. Save that verse, too. Yeah. Um, interesting. Yeah. And it's true that if you attend no trial and you reconstitute it and then you only see six kids, yes, you're wasting four doses. Yes. But if we, if we make a map that costs twice as much, you send it out, bring, I don't know, 80 for a campaign, but then only 60 kids show up. If it's CT3, you have to throw it away, and then you've wasted much more, and much more money. And more just more expensive to sell me. Yeah. yeah. So, right. so it seems to me, because right now it looks like an ABN30 may be achievable, that perhaps that would be preferable over a CTC where you can yeah. take it out. The square looks okay. Maybe you can yeah. back that back in a But it all depends on what you test, right? I mean, if you would test three days at the board and then back in a fridge, and it's fine... But I just don't think that's how CTC is used. No, it's not how it's defined, and that's the trouble. Because yeah, if you test it in the lab and it works, and you have the data. But at that point, then then what is the difference between a BBM thirty that that would also work out of three days? Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. I think uh, sometimes we just put many many tools, many products that that are supposed to complement each other. Mm. You know, if you are BBM thirty. Just go use that. Yeah. Um, a CTC also just help mass campaign because you are involved in many other vac- vaccinators that are not necessarily um, familiar with the routine program. Uh, so, so they may yeah. not be sure to look. Or, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, no, it's really and on and on. you may not be able to have time that to be. Um, they would be in that we are starting with uh, Zebra, a study on Vivian now. After 20 years. I'd yeah. like to ask my friend if you have No, it's integration is very complex, right? I mean, some processes are complicated, but if it kind of starts, then it accelerates. So if you would have started an aggregation process at 20 degrees, it would then accelerate. Yeah. Well, others are actually. <laughs> slow down, they're going to put all off. So yeah, it really depends on your product and what kind of aggregation you're. Well, right, but to, to get the BGM 30, then you, you've already tested it at 37C for 30. But I see what you're saying, because you could reach higher temperatures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, and, and so you, you want 30 and 30. So, but of course, nothing is ever going to be 30 and 30. Right, right. Yeah. You have this whole yeah. mystery of different yeah. temperatures, and yeah, you cannot, you can test everything, but yeah. yeah, you need to, to know that they're still working. Okay, good. Okay. And continue. One <laughs> So the starting point for estimating the, the the volume of the vaccine or the cold chain capacity required, because it's more or less we use those terms interchangeably, cold chain capacity or vaccine volume. The vaccine volume, cold chain capacity is designed to store the volume of vaccine. So it is distinguishing the packaging because this is that determines the volume of the vaccine we occupy in the cold chain. And depending on the storage, as I say at the beginning, at the big store, central store, they store it either in the, the shipper or in the pallet, even in the large warehouse, they, they, they store in this. But in the most of the refrigerator, they store in secondary pack. And sometimes just in the buy, but very rarely. So you have to know which, which packaging we're using. And one for each this packaging, you need to calculate what volume of the packaging and divide by the number of doses the package contains. This will give us what we call the per dose pack volume. If I say that BCG pallet is length multiplied by heat multiplied by wide, contain 1,000 doses of BCG. So the pack volume uh, will be maybe X doses, X cubic centimeter per dose. And if I have X number of doses, I just multiply by the number of doses. So, and how to calculate that packed volume, how to establish it, it is just taking the packaging I'm using. If I'm using story vaccine in the secondary pack, I take it. If I'm using the shipper, if I'm using that, I'll take that volume and multiply. And then I calculate <coughs> the number of doses. I mean that uh, the, how many vials it contain in this, this, or in this, or in this. And then I multiply by the number of doses in each vial to get the total number of doses 
that contain the packages. So I have the volume of the packages that is here, 15 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 7. Do you know, do you have that? How many, what will be the pack volume of this in this case? Seven by by twelve by fifteen divided by two hundred. Six point three. Six point three cubic centimeter per dose. So this is the part one. In general, if you go to the website. And sometimes the manufacturers or manufacturer provided this information also. You will have those figures that are already spelled out. What is manufacturer? What is presentation? Polio is, let's say, one cubic centimeter per dose. Measure is three. DTP is um, 1.1. Just like that. And this differs also by manufacturer. And it is really the basis for estimating the volume. Okay. But how do I estimate the available capacity of the ocean equipment? Depending on the equipment, if it is a fridge, it's just the internal volume and you need that the percentage that you can occupy. You see that for this fridge, if you multiply the external volume. So the net capacity is just half of this. Half of this. Hopefully. So mean that if you have a free of gross gross capacity of 100 liter, the volume you can reasonably use is just 50 liter. Because vaccine needs to be stored for air circulation or for handling also just to be able to put your hand to take any vaccine away. So this is really important to know. So don't take that a higher fee of 100, 200 liter, and then vaccine 200 liter. No, doesn't match. It should be double of the volume of vaccine in terms of gross capacity. What's the back for vegetables? Hmm? It's saying ignore that rule where you like don't want to put your vegetables in back. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, don't worry. <laughs> so sorry, so they, you've got two liters of vaccine and you're saying you need four liter fridge. Sorry, I'm not sure. I can't be high. Yeah, right, okay, okay. Sorry. Let's if you have a room of 20 cubic meters, you okay. can use only 10 cubic meters. Okay. Even for cold, it's even less because cold room, you, uh, you will not have that the hand that goes in. You have to go in and walk in. That we say walk in cold room. If it is a drive-in cold room that you have a small track that's so you have to leave, there will be this less will be the net capacity and the the ratio the net at uh, the cross over the net is called the cross factor the human cross factor so uh, here, just to respond to, I think you were saying the vegetable thing. You know, this, this capacity, you don't count this in the, the space you can store the vaccine. The, you can store the vaccine starting from here to here. Because this is also for ice packs. Can you, you were just talking about the cold room. Cold um, room? And I understand the 50% for a cold room if you're like a person who has to like <laughs> be walking around. But for a refrigerator, could you be like, oh, maybe I can put a little more. Yeah, refrigerator is 50%. Oh, okay. Cold room, maybe 25%. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, you need like airflow and stuff too. Yeah. So you need, you need to walk in because the fridge is a small, you can just pack on your hand and you get it there. Yeah. But the walk in cold room, you have to get inside. Two yeah. people can go there and then there. You will use only 25% of the internal space. Mm-hmm. Okay. Probably not more. If you are very optimal, better 30%. The freezers with drawers is probably more. Yeah, for drawer is, is, um, more efficient. But if it's like this. Yeah. Uh, 
So for the call room, I think, I'm oh, sorry, for the call room, so the cross capacity is just the internal volume is here. But the net capacity is that the capacity on the normal call rooms are shared. It's only the space available on shelves. Because in the alley, you can actually come for there. <clears throat> and these are some of the indicative indicative factors, grossing factor. You see, in a call of 10 cubic meter gross, to get the net capacity, you have to divide this by 3 or 3.5. See? So we have 25% here. Only one-fourth of the net capacity. The net capacity represents one-fourth of the gross capacity. And the refrigerator, you see that it is half, so by half, here, even more than half. And in the PQS, if you take the information sheet of each refrigerator in the, in the PQS, PQS is the quality, safety, and standard. See, just a duplicate um, normative for pre-qualifying immunization devices. They provide those information already. So you don't need just to start measuring that way. You see that the uh, vaccine storage capacity means that this is net, and this is manufacturer gross capacity. You see that. Is, uh, so you have this sheet for each equipment that is provided. If you have those information already stated there. For your calculation, you are going to take uh, the, the vaccine storage capacity. And normally, uh, to what extent do you do you let me just say this? Uh, if we are establishing capacity, putting capacity, what will be the level you have to aim for? Not the annual volume, because it doesn't make sense. You are not going to you are just going to make huge investment just to receive the annual vaccine in one go. So you see that this will be tied on the because vaccine keeps shipping in different frequencies. Let's say every three months should be three months stock for the call plus a safety stock that is in there. So the maximum stock is that the maximum supply interval plus the safety stock. So your Cold room or your cold chain capacity should be able to store that capacity, that volume of that action that corresponds to that. <clears throat> so how do I estimate uh, storage volume? As we say that it is one is one of the questions with that based on the available vaccine. You have the vaccine that is coming, it's arriving at the airport. We are sending you one million doses of measles vaccine for the campaign. You know that. You use that based on total volume of doses. But you are planning for in 2023, what will be my cold chain capacity? You don't have any volume, any vaccine doses here in concrete. So you use based on fully, on full cost of vaccination. And full cost of vaccination is a little bit complex than this. So let's see. These are two tables. This is just the total doses. You put all the vaccines. If you have the number of doses, the quantity of doses, uh, the vial size, and then the fact of volume we are seeing at the beginning. We just make the multiplication. This multiply by this to get this. This is the storage volume. Where Julian is require, and then you say, okay, which vaccine, which temperature you just allocate, which vaccine is stored where, and get the total. Very simple. But this is, if you know this, what is brilliant. This is an example. For the full course, you can say the same thing. Okay, in my, uh, in 2020, 30, I will have this vacuum in my schedule. These are the presentation I'm going to use. I'm going to do a vial, 
based on uh, based on that in my schedule and have one dose for BCG, four doses of peace. For each vaccine, you have that. You have the packed volume. And you have your target. What is the target population? It present what proportion in the total in the total population. This are surviving infant is uh, what three point one birth annual birth for BCG and birth uh, for a pregnant woman and then maybe slightly higher. Uh, whatever. Okay. What is the coverage? Well, I, we take here hundred. So, of course. And then you multiply the wastage. What will likely in my what will my wastage using BCG? You have to estimate. It either from your anticipated or from your historical data. Okay. Oh, the past 10 years, we used to have, normally we have this waste of BCG. You use that, and you convert into the factor. 50% equal to 2. two. Everything just multiply. You start multiplying from here. 1 multiplied by this, multiplied by this, multiplied by this, multiplied by this, and you get that. So, you see that which vaccine actually is the most bulky? Measles. <laughs> um, and so the wastage factor, I mean, is that sort of, I'm sure there are a lot of variables, but is it kind of related to like routine versus campaign? And then there's our stability. Exactly. And so, how much? So this is routine. Because campaign, you can accommodate by oh, with, okay. with a fast chain or you can, oh, okay. uh, you can lend uh, or hire a cold room. Yeah. We're fishing, not fishing, but um, yeah. alcohol. So, you see, you can see here, okay, if you add all this, you get that, okay, my program for this schedule by 2030, I'll have for each individual. That's just per one child. Though. Yeah, per one, oh, and not per one, per yeah. one individual. Individual. Per one individual. Huh? Target. What target? Because here, it's not the same. Here, these are women's. But as you are using the percentage, you can then use the total population. To get the thing, you have to multiply this now by total population of your country at that horizon. If you are 20 million, per 10 million, you multiply this by 10 million. Because it is already factored here. This is percentage of the total population. So, yeah, what I mistake? On the targeted coverage, I see two columns. Indicative coverage. Ah, yeah. Coverage. This is your, uh, no, uh, yeah, this is the, the percentage of uh, target. Like percentage of the population? Or the population. Sorry. Sorry. It's a typo. Thank you. Uh, this is the coverage, vaccination coverage. coverage. This is the percentage. What is the target for this vaccine? It is yeah. infant, uh, birth. So, this target population. Yeah. Target vaccination. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, and then this will be the quotient print of your, quotient footprint of your, your program. Uh, I don't have this here. We have made some relation. If do you know in Switzerland what what is the volume of the vaccine per individual in Switzerland? Mm-hmm. Well, I assume it's a lot in Europe. Those in Europe, and their ranges, their massive. Yeah, in yeah, in Europe, it is one thousand, one thousand per individual. Oh. <laughs> because all the vaccines are single, single, do- single, yeah. Yeah, single, like, single shot. Yeah. Sometimes even pre-field syringe. Yeah. Yeah. And this is more or less for low-income countries in you know, a 10 times less. So you are consuming mm-hmm. more. Just another example of where it's from the planet. <laughs> yeah. so, so it's that. So it has an impact on the culture and infrastructure at the end. These, these, no, not this, but this. 
We also have more doses in our schedule too, right? So we'll exactly. And you have more vaccine here than there. So this is this is I think in Europe, Euro countries we probably have different we have six public regions. If you compare the average in Europe, Afro, Paho, and West, Euro is uh, starting from five hundred to one twenty cubic centimeters per individual. But, uh, and this is, this is, this is for Dillian. And then you can just swap this now to the corresponding, to the relevant temperature range. Here we just put here just alternatively. Vaccine that can be stored in case. So this is the two methods. So this is just an example here, just calculating the volume also. What is actually very difficult sometimes, the transport, how many tracks there are in? This was a, a, a headache for most of the countries for when we are making a measles campaign. How many tracks are there to carry to take vaccine from one province to another one? So this is just the methods. You have to know the volume of the vaccine first. For each, for each distribution route to this social route. And then from this, you can calculate the number of insulated containers. Knowing that each container has a capacity, the total volume of the vaccine divided by the number of the volume per container. Normally, the big container are 20 liters, more or less. And you have the number of containers, cold boxes. And you have to know what is the total gross volume of these cold boxes. For a country like DRC, it is a big challenge because their transportation is by air. But the, the, the land infrastructure is very, very poor. And so you need to know that. You need to know the volume of the bulk volume of these cold boxes taken together and also the weight. Because the transport company or the transit company will charge you on the most favorable for them. If it is really heavy, they will charge by weight. If it is very light but very bulky, then they will charge you by what? So you need to calculate both. You have to see, okay, I need to carry one cubic meter to for 1,000 kilometers. They know the cost, the cost elements are known in most of the country. Or I need to carry one ton for 1,000 kilometers. Also, it's known. So the tra transit company always will charge you, well, they check this. Uh, it's not favorable. They check this, they, they will charge you that. And how many plant packers need to pack this vaccine? You may need some time cold room just to, or freezer room just to continue to have the adequate number. Or number of freezer that can cool or freeze those cool and pack. So all these calculations are in the different tools on product. And these are the reference document that what we call the VMH publication that provides you guidance for that. I think they were in the, the readout. A document that we are probably sharing with you. <clears throat> this is like the production. This is a, a, a concrete exercise. It was the same here that we have put that. And now refrigerators are classified in different groups or categories. The new requirement that you are setting the PQS are set there to avoid that the the refrigerator should not be able to freeze the vaccine, freeze and the vaccine. It should maintain the temperature in two to eight, but it should never, it can go maybe up 10, but it should never go below, below zero. And this is grade A label refrigerators. So the refrigerator that um, without no intervention at Temperature depending on 43 degrees or depending on which temperature has been rated, 
will the temperature inside the freeze will never go below zero degrees. So they will be qualified with the label grade A. But grade B is that maybe you have to make some one intervention. Uh, one intervention can be what? Yeah, so if you store in, for example, in basket, you know that um, uh, top opening vaccine, the refrigerator have basket inside. And until the vaccine are stored in the basket, they will never be exposed to freezing, for example, for this grade B. But this, no matter where you store the vaccine, it will never be uh, at risk for freezing. And grade C, you need more than one level. For example, uh, use the the basket, of course, and also insulate um, the how should I the um, use insulation barriers in your in your fridge just to avoid that freezing between the uh, evaporator and the rest of the compartment, for example. So these are the grades now that have been put just to stratify and to categorize the different um, coaching equipment. Of course, these most of the countries are calling for these. And these are the different temperature zones. Each refrigerator is coming with these labels and freezer are coming with this. Can be this in the hot zone, plus 43, mean that it can, can it can produce guarantee the luminal freezing temperature even if the ambient is um, plus forty three. Mm -hmm. But if it is has this label, maybe temperature should not exceed thirty two degrees. Otherwise, it may not guarantee that uh, the temperature will be minus. And this is moderate zone, maybe in in in, in <laughs> the same for refrigerator. You see that it's your higher and then lower. This is the minimum rated, depending on the grades. Okay. And also, you have a link here to, to the PQS catalog, where you have the list of all the to date um, devices that are requalified for refrigerators for selection. And this is what we are doing that the solar, solar battery drive. Solar direct drive. In the resource, you need the panels for both. You have the regulator that controls the charge of the batteries, and the battery just feed in through the regulator, the, the refrigerator, if there's no sun. But here, the electricity is, the energy excess electricity is stored in the battery actually here in this case. Here you have the ice bank, the excess electricity that is generated is stored to, is used to produce ice. And this ice is available inside just to keep the temperature. So this is actually the flow chart. Depending on the energy source you are in your, in the location, what type of refrigerator you are going to select. This is really interesting to know. If you have electricity that is available only up to four to eight hours, less than eight hours a day, you need to use ice line refrigerator. Ice line means that in the refrigerator budget you have ice line where you have uh, water that is put and this water got term a thermal, thermal, thermal buffer. Even if the of a power cut, it prolongs the whole over time. And here you can just use that. But if you have, let's say, electricity is available like here, house, 24 hours, yes, an electric compressor, the standard one, as we are, our previous application, I'm using, you can just use that. Only with a probably voltage regulator or time to time just to regulate it. 
if electricity is less than four hours, that you need to explore other options. These are not anymore possible. Solar direct drive, battery powered, or long-term passive device, or absorption refrigerator. These are some of the elements in the both from WHO PQS and also from UNICEF catalog, where you have different references if you want to check. If you go to the website, the catalog, you have different categories, up to 13 PQS categories of immunization devices. Your E1, this is all rooms, specifications. E2 are refrigerator vehicles. And this refrigerator and freezer are this. If you click on that, it open you all the pre-qualified refrigerator. Just, you can just click on this, on the link, and you see the detailed specification of the equipment. This will just a small exercise you can play with also. If people understand what type of refrigerator we can use here, if you have electricity available on between four to seven hours a day, which one do you use? This, this? Solar generator. Oh, this. <laughs> 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 Not solar. Solar is if electricity yeah. is less than four hours. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What about here? You have electricity is between eight and and twenty, with some interruptions. The same thing. You use this, and then also et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we don't have anything here. Then just. That is fun. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So just said that to remind again this work. How do you select? Because these these are actually very cheap equipment. These are exp expensive equipment. So if you have already electricity available, and then you <laughs> because we have actually the UNICEF has no UNICEF Gavi has open a funding opportunity just to improve to modernize the culture of the low-income countries. Mm -hmm. They apply, they develop a proposal, and they say, okay, we want your support just to, to modernize our culture. And what we are seeing, all countries, even the electricity, the capital city, including you, <laughs> <laughs> they all start putting these <laughs> No. You have to use it efficiently. <laughs> so anyway, so so <laughs> yeah, it's nice. <laughs> yeah. Get yeah, yeah. So this is this is the thing. Okay, here. Okay, why? Because here, once you install solar direct drive, you don't pay um, electricity bills. Yes, but quite for. But it doesn't mean that you have to charge them. <laughs> anyway, this are the thing that. Yeah. And then more to device, temperature more to devices. What I want to say here actually uh, is the requirement and to be able to distinguish thermometer from VVM or from different devices because there are many today, many. Which one to select? This is really a big problem. And this section will provide you some guidance uh, for that. Um, mm -hmm. I've already opened it, fine. <laughs> uh, primarily, there are three types of um, temperature monitoring devices, three, depending on the... Not the purpose, but the way they monitor the time temperature. You have indicators. The indicators are put for the function that they don't, you cannot read the temperature of that. But they provide you that 
this temperature condition where has happened here, like the VVM. The VVM will show you the, oh, it has moved from stage one, very clear to dark, getting darker. You say, oh, this has been more exposure temperature. But which temperature, you don't know. This is indicator. Or the freeze time. The freeze time will go from peak to cross alarm. That it can tell you what was the temperature, but we take for sure you say, oh, this, it was exposed to sub-zero temperature. But what was the temperature, you don't know. So these are indicators. The reader, readers are thermometer. Thermometer can read the temperature. Einstein time is now, not yesterday. You don't know what was yesterday or what was before the coffee. So you don't know, just, just read. And then the recorder. The recorder, record, I think we say that this file, you can see, if you take it, you can look at in January, that day, Wednesday, that, 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 that was the temperature. This is the ideal. That's like a temperature logger. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Logger. If you have all that information, then you need some sort of model for each vaccine about how much, like, net heat they have accumulated? Like, or is, is it kind of doing the same thing as, like, a BBF that's going to change once you... Oh, no, because I know there's a difference between, like, a poop temperature, which... But you have opened the door now for the yeah. <laughs> You do the information. Yeah, like, no, exactly. So here, even if you have these spikes, the vaccine that was stored in your fridge, this type of format, are you concerned with that? No. You see, you are not sure that this vaccine was in this, this fridge actually. Maybe the vaccine was taken out of. Oh. So these are monitoring actually the inside of the temperature. But they can be taken out. Mm -hmm. If I put it under for the here, I say your temperature was 20 degrees. No, it was just on the table. You see, it was dissociated from the fridge. But the VVM, VVM is going with the vaccine. Even if you don't know the temperature, it is more important than that information, which is historical data. Because to give you, ah, uh, this vine has gone through these, a, a, an amount of uh, heat that was accumulated to give to give this state. So, it's better to have the indicator that is taking in the vine, probably. This is very good, provided that it is integrated into the bridge. If you take the history, because we are going to see the before how the fridges were. At home, do you have temperature in, temperature in your fridges? At the reader? The reader, yes. Yeah. The quarter down. No, at home. At yeah. home. Yeah. In your kitchen. Yeah. There is no. Even for the cold chain, it was like that. At the beginning, the cold chain was just to make the device to store the vaccine to produce the heat and the cold. But they completely forgot to put to measure that. Ah, and then uh, those were long time in the API. In the they see that the program start buying um, the The biggest, but why we don't this is, you don't get integrate the fridge in the, the thermometer in the fridge? Then the next generation of fridges were issued with the thermometer included. Mm -hmm. To make a big difference. But it was not sufficient because as soon as I'm here, I can see the temperature. But during the weekend, I don't know. If I'm back during from Monday, I don't know what has happened because I can see only you know, what I'm reading today now. And then they start integrating those. Um, thermometer in the field become now a uh, record lower. So you can see up to 60 days, you can see. Now they have expanded now in the cloud. 
So this is that evolution that we say. Okay, if you give an example of here, we already say VDM, here thermometer, here we have different logos. You know, you don't know, you 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 Expect that you can do this this year. So these are what we have. This very old one we call that um, uh, CC, CCM. This is VDM. Fresh tag, fresh tag. These are different component of of um, shipper. These are thermometer to hang. Same, same for laser. And these are recorders or logos. These are 30 days, also 30 days. This is seven days. This is a big logo. This is now in the cloud. So there's a, a constant evolution of temperature recording because the, 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 the reach of quality is really important in the vaccination because not just vaccinate, but you have to immunize, uh, to immunize it with potent vaccines. That's why this evolution has been made in place. So we have already seen here the VDM details and the VDM what is saying you have this type of VDM. There's a, one that was introduced now, the VDM 11. Yeah, VDM 11 become available now. So, but the reading is definitely this number corresponds to this, this temperature. Make sure that you read this temperature that you have that. And you see that if you put at, if you change the temperature at two to eight, it can be up more than four years if the vaccine shelf is. And I think I don't yet, but so to achieve this, you have to demonstrate at each of those temperatures, right? You can't like, if you get, 30 days at 37C and greater than 4 years of 5C, but 25C, you can't achieve, then you don't get VDM 30, right? You have to. Yeah. Okay. The vaccine, the vaccine uh, stability profile should, should be matched with the VDM. Um, it, it, it is supposed to, to, to carry. Is and for picture, this picture you see that this the explanation of the function is device in which you see this are many you see that many here. What I wanted to show you is not just the initial exercise. And this again so I think that's what I'm talking for you. This is the because we are moving now for temperature monitoring to equipment monitoring. Because actually, if you see all the others, uh, we are well, monitoring the temperature, but not equipment. Because sometimes the device can be disconnected from temperature. But now, these are put here that and the new specification have been put in place. Uh, let me show you that. Where is that? Uh, yeah, here. WHO has issued last year new specification for um, equipment management system. So just not monitor just the temperature, but all the functional characteristics or parameters of the fridge. Uh, run, run time, uh, number of time you open the door, uh, alarms, and these are put in the design, and this current now will be an uh, issue the level one, we say here, the level one, then you can just use the give from the supervisor, you can just go and take the data and, um, and gradually it moves with associated with alarm for local display and local alarm if you are in the service and then moving towards the remote, remote monitoring. And this just include not only the temperature, but I say that it is providing the, num the number of time the, the, it has been working. And I think we are, we are okay now. Uh, if there are power cut, it will just monitor the quality of water supply, uh, the door opening. Multiple data logger are here and then can just connect that and then pull all these things 
not only just the tap 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 to monitor. So this is a new development that will be coming um, starting in the in the fiscal next year. No, yeah, next year, next year. The rest of the things you see that there are many other things that you have uh, the details. <laughs> okay, I think we have to go now for the. Yeah. 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 Yeah.